My name is Carlton Cartwright. I'm the executive director for the Children's Coalition Incorporated and we are here at the Sims State Veterans Nursing Home at um, what's the address? 4419? 4419 Tram Road. Right, in Panama City and the zip code is 32404 and assisting me is uh, Ruben Sparks who is acting as my uh, sound technician and we are here today interviewing sir what is your name Edward S. Johnson okay Mr. Johnson and today's date is September 28th 2019 and Mr. Johnson uh, what is um when is your birthday April 23 21 okay and um, your address is here yes okay at um, the um, the Sim State nursing nursing home right. okay um, what what um what what were your enlistment dates? Uh, it was in uh, June of nineteen forty. Okay, were you drafted or enlisted? No, enlisted. Okay, what branch of the service was that? That's Army Air Corps. Oh, okay, all right. Um. Okay, uh, what was your rank when you separated? E seven, Master Sergeant. Oh, okay. Good. So. Why did you choose that branch? Uh, I uh, went into the service at Maxwell Air Force Base and uh, I just uh, decided that, that was uh, the best service. It, it, I, I didn't care for the Army or, or Marine Corps or the Navy. So I just I elected the Army Air Corps at that time. Okay. Okay, and um, what were you doing just before you went into service? Uh, I was uh, working with an electrical company from Georgia and it was putting in power lines. Power lines. Uh, okay, in Georgia? In Alabama. In Alabama, I'm sorry. Okay. The headquarters was in Georgia. Oh, okay. All right. All right. Um, what made you decide to go into the service? Uh, <coughs> I decided that was the best for me. Uh, and I just, uh, I was attracted to the service somewhat. Okay. Where, where did you, um, where did you do your, your basic training? At Maxwell Air Force Base, Alabama, uh -huh. Montgomery. Okay. And how long was that? You remember? Mm, it was not very long, I would say. Uh, a couple of months? Maybe about a uh, month and a half. Okay. And uh, from there, where did you go to tech school or AIT? Which I went to uh, it's a truck company at Maxwell, and we stayed at Maxwell there for about... Uh, I think about uh, a year and a half, and then we went by truck. It was a truck company that I was in, in the Army Air Corps, and uh, I went to uh, Jeffersonburg, St. Louis, Jeffersonburg, Overland with the vehicles and the personnel, total personnel. Uh huh. And what was what did your job consist of? In the Air Force at that time, at the, when I entered, I was a clerk. Uh, clerk. Okay. Okay. And did it change? Did it? Did you wind up doing something different? Well, I wound up uh, in the orderly room, and I was a, a buck sergeant at that time. And my first sergeant was shipped out. And I had two, they had two people working in addition to myself in the orderly room. And uh, so uh, I got a call uh, about, uh, I guess, it was in uh, St. Louis, say, in Jefferson Barracks. And uh, Let's see. So we went to Jefferson Barracks, and we were Jefferson Barracks 
for a high state of Jefferson Barracks for about two years. Oh, okay. In St. Louis. Uh-huh. We then mm -hmm. uh, Jefferson Barracks, then I went to Chanute Air Force Base in uh, Illinois. At uh, Rantoul, Illinois, and that base was later closed. Not in my time, but uh, it did. Uh, it phased out. Okay. And uh, then I, uh, incidentally, just just going back, uh, I got a call from the uh, colonel's office, full colonel. And they wanted me to be the first sergeant. My first sergeant shipped out. They had to have a lot of units there. World wars coming on, whatever. Well, it was well, it was in effect, I believe, at that time. Uh, so uh, so the colonel's office called me and wanted me to be the first sergeant. Well, I was 21 years old, and I told them, I said, uh, hey, we better, I better try this out for about, uh, well, hold off for two weeks and make me decide if I wanted to be a first sergeant. That was a jump from the buck sergeant all the way to the first sergeant. And first sergeants at that time, where, where they were tech sergeants, and when they, it was, uh, I believe that I was maybe a tech sergeant for a couple of weeks. Then they went to E7 master sergeant. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I told the colonel, the colonel's office, yeah, I would take it. So I took over after the two weeks and uh, everything went well. And I was the first sergeant for a time, from, from that time until I retired. Okay. How many years was that, you know? Uh, 26, 26. Right, okay. Um, what were your duties as a first sergeant? Well, that was, uh, I was in charge of uh, primarily a uh, first sergeant's job is, uh, it's a disciplinary uh, assignment, so to speak, and I had to, uh, I had to conduct myself properly so that uh, I uh, could uh, I could keep the airman straight, so to speak. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, then it was an administrative work, too. Okay, a lot of paperwork. Yeah, a lot of paperwork. Yeah, a lot of paperwork. Okay. But you're also in a leadership role. Yeah. Without a doubt, yeah. Uh, where did you travel while you were in the service? Where did you travel? You mean out of the service? Or? No, while you were in the service. While in the service? You, I, I mean vacations, home, what? Oh, oh, what Everything. Okay, uh, I traveled uh, to my home in Ozark, Alabama. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. That was primarily it. Okay. Yeah. I, and I Troy, Alabama, if you know where that is. Therefore, it's about uh, midway between Ozark and Montgomery. Okay. So uh, we several of us would go down to Troy because we knew some people down there, right? And also some girls, and uh, <laughs> we uh, at the, at those days we didn't have a car, and uh, I don't remember how we got down there. Travel so we, bus train. It must have been the bus that we traveled on. Okay. But we had one way, and so. At that time, uh, uh, gas was, uh, you had, one had to have uh, the small coupons to get a gallon of gas. So we went, we would go down and we had no coupons and uh, we'd get back to Maxwell and my truckers would, uh, would give us a coupon to something like that to uh -huh. get some gas. And uh, yeah, we was on the car, you know. Right. And right. The car. The car came later in life. Okay, got you. Okay. Um, how did you get along with officers? Oh, I did quite well. Yeah, I had during my time. I've had a lot of, a lot of officers. Mm -hmm. I had to work. I had to. Uh, 
some officers are a little more difficult to get along with than others, but uh, most of my officers were good, good people. Uh huh. And um, your peers in general, you know, enlisted personnel. What? What's that? How did you get along with them? Uh, with the officers? No, with the enlisted. Oh, the enlisted quite well. Uh, in my total of service, 26 years, uh, I think we uh, uh, let go of about uh, eight people in the total time. Uh huh. I was 26 years. Well, that's not bad. That's good. Yeah. Yeah. Really good. Okay. Um, how was the food? How was the food? Uh, the food, I would say, uh, was uh, pretty good. The, uh, I ate in the dining halls in all those days, and the food was pretty good. And I remember that uh, in all the uh, dining halls that I visited, uh, they uh, you had to you had to uh, eat all of the food on your plate. They they insisted on that. Uh -huh. No waste, huh? No way. No way. <laughs> okay. You had to eat all you put on a plate. Yeah. Did you did you stay in touch with your family the entire time you were in the service? Uh, pretty much so, but uh, in the later years I was not. Uh, I was not. Uh, very well with my people. I, I have to say that I'm, I'm sorry that that happened that way. Right. But I did. I, uh, I didn't, didn't go home often. Okay. Okay. Well, did you ever get married? Have kids? Yeah, I got married in uh, '52. I was at uh, Tyndall out here, Tyndall Air Force Base, and. Uh, the girl was from here, and uh, I talked with her, and I was going overseas, and I didn't know where I would be going after I'd gotten to Europe. And uh, when I when I uh, got to Europe and was reassigned to be in Austria, uh, after six months, I sent her nine hundred dollars. And she flew to Vienna, mm -hmm. and she was on a on that Pan Am double decker. Yeah. And she was sleeping in the double decker on that nine hundred dollars I sent her, and <laughs> and when she got there, <laughs> an American in the base in Vienna, two T U L L N two, two in Air Base. It would have been had been like, it had been a base that uh, Hitler took, you know, Hitler uh, occupied uh, Austria. Right. And uh, it was a three-story uh, bar barracks, and, and it was a big place, a big, I mean, I'm talking about the barracks were big, right. huge, you know, maybe three stories. And uh, of course, we only occupied uh, at that time, but we had, we had to, the enlisted people was, was who, the enlisted people who were not uh, married and having their, their families there, they, they uh, slept in the barracks there, yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay, so when she got there, you got married? She came over, we were married by the chaplain, by the chaplain of the Air Force. Right. And then three hours later, we were married by the civilian authorities in uh, Austria. We had a requirement, yeah. Right, right, mm -hmm. right. Okay. Okay. Um, so, okay, now that I, I just found out that you traveled overseas, you were stationed in Austria? Yeah, Vienna. And, and how long were you there? Uh, two years. And what was your job there? First sergeant. Oh, you were first sergeant there. Uh, um, were there ever any casualties in any of your companies? Uh, yes. When I was in Vienna, <coughs> we had a, we had a C-47, C-47 jail, uh -huh. about two C-47s, 
and an L5 aircraft, a little small craft. And uh, we had we had people, I think it was about 15 or 18, 15 to 8, 6, 15 to uh, 17, I'd say. I think I can remember the exact number, but they were, they went to, uh, they flew to, uh, they flew to uh, Taiwan. Okay. They flew to Taiwan. I don't know exactly what the, uh, what they were doing, but, uh, uh, let's see, at that time, at that time, uh, and uh, the people were uh, supplying Southeast Asia with uh, equipment, such as uh, they they were supplying the countries Southeast Asia, and the airplane took taking off, coming back to ten, to. Uh, to uh, Vienna, it took off and turned and flipped and killed 16 people. Mm. They were from uh, e, uh, E3 or 4 uh -huh. all the way to uh, majors through majors. Uh -huh. Tragic. Right. Yeah. Tragic. Uh -huh. Did you travel around, around Europe while you were there? Uh, yeah, I traveled trying to Vienna. I flew on um, weekend we were flying. I flew to Vienna two times and uh, I was supposed to try, try to have that C-47 and have it filled with people, but I couldn't get enough people. <laughs> they, they weren't, they didn't, they didn't care to go. Uh -huh. But Vienna, I mean, uh, uh, Hong Kong, we, we flew, flew to Hong Kong. Oh, really? Yeah. Well, Hong Kong was, uh, was be it's a beautiful place, uh -huh. but you know, now they got to, they're having problems, you know. Hong Kong is being taken over by, or uh, trying to be taken over by China. Right. And China, here the agreement was, I think the agreement was, uh, I don't know how many years, but they were China could take it over at a certain point. Mm -hmm. But they had come up earlier here, and this happened a while, about a month ago, and they had a lot of, a lot of protesters. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, they're having their problems. That's for sure. It's beautiful, beautiful to city though. Uh huh. Yeah. The runway when you were flying in there, mm -hmm. you had uh, we had uh, it had. Uh, Rock cliffs on the, on this side. The plane had to fly in it, I guess, and then come on out. And the runway was out in the water, all the way in the water. Wow. Okay. Unusual. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, where else besides Hong Kong and, and Austria? Oh yeah. Uh, while I was there, uh, I flew to. Uh, I flew to, uh, I'm trying to remember the name of this country, and it, and it, and it, and I, uh, I can't quite do it. You know, I'm 98 years old and six, five months. Okay. 98 years old and five months. Okay. My, my father, my father was 99 when he passed. Yeah. Yeah. Well, <laughs> if I can live another seven months, I will be 99. Okay, you will. <laughs> I don't know about that. I hear you. So, can you remember any place else that you went and traveled? Yeah. Uh, uh, did Did you go to Did you go to Germany or Italy, France? Yeah, yeah, I went to Germany. Uh, Vienna was a Vienna was was full power. You had the uh, Americans. The Russians, the French, and uh, there's more. Let's see. The British? British, yeah. The there British. You go. <laughs> so they had that 
cordoned off according to the country, that four countries. Right. And we were in the Russian zone. Uh huh. Twenty miles out of Vienna. Okay. We had to travel every day twenty miles. You know, the married people who lived in town. Uh huh. Twenty miles to the base, and uh, the Russians were nearby, and. Uh, we had one occasion where uh, a major and a tech sergeant wanted to go off base to see the girls. They met some girls on base, yeah. and the Russians picked them up. <laughs> and then, <laughs> so the our headquarters that we supplied us was the army, and uh, up on street. What's the name of that town? Can't remember the name of the town. Uh huh. But uh, get, getting back just for a point here, when Jane and I was uh, not married, but we was going, to, we had to go to we had to go to uh, this town. What is the town? You know what I'm talking about. Uh -uh. It's a uh, in Austria. Yeah, Upper Austria they call it. Upper up, Austria. Upper, upper Austria. That's what the that was where it was. That's the way they called it. But the name of the town. Uh, what? I can't. I don't know what it is either. I can't recall it right off. Mm -hmm. I have trouble remembering names of people and. Places I have two. That's two uh, two uh, items that I have probably. Austria seemed like it would be a pretty place. Oh though. yeah, it's pretty. Yeah. These uh, prices were cheap, and uh, the specialty there for most of people was uh, the uh, was a Wiener Schnitzel. Yeah. The Wiener Schnitzel. Yeah. It was lamb, I think, or something like that. It was it was good though. Really good, yeah. That was a fried item. I'm trying to trying to bring up the um well, yeah. the country. Oh, yeah, I was I was I'm retired Air Force. I was I was stationed at Aviano Air Base. Well, I would have longed to go. Yeah, I would have loved it, to go to Italy. Austria. Yeah. Yeah, you were you were in Italy. Yeah. yeah. Well, I traveled to uh, Italy twice too. Yeah. While I was in Vienna. Yeah, it's beautiful up there. Uh, Did you go to Venice? Yeah, a lot of times. I I went and visited. Aviano and Venice. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Aviano is about a thirty, forty minute train ride. From yeah, Venice, so you, 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 were, you were right. You were south of us. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's pretty. It's a beautiful part of the world. There. Yeah, yeah man. <coughs> it's just taking this time. It's just it's loading. Yeah. Uh, but um, let's see. What else do we have? Did you did you get to London? Did you visit Britain? Yeah, one time. You did. Yeah. Okay. What about Paris? My wife and I drove, drove to Paris from Vienna. Okay, all right. It's it's still coming in. I'm trying to find that city for you. Uh, Switzerland? Now, it was near Switzerland, but it was still in Vienna, say. I mean, in Austria. It was in Austria. Right. Switzerland was uh, south east of us, I believe. Um, yeah, I didn't get to Switzerland, but I got within 30 miles of it. There's Vienna, there's Graz so far, uh, Salzburg. Salzburg, it was Salzburg. Is that what it was? Yeah. It was north, northwest. It, no. Of, it, of, of, um, it was, no, no. It was, it it was, was south, southwest south, of Vienna. South, southwest of Vienna, yeah. Yeah. Okay. It was, it was southwest of Vienna, yeah. And so what happened there? Where are we now? Salzburg. You said something. We went, we went to Salzburg. My, my wife, she wasn't my wife at the time. We had to go up there to get the approval. Oh. To get married. And even though the airmen was marrying the, Vienna, the girls from Vienna, and they had, they, it was okay. They didn't have to go, but I, we had to go because my wife, they called it, uh, they had to support her, so to speak, with uh, supplies and all, but that was, that was, 
There's nothing to that. That was a bunch of bull. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. All right. Okay. Okay. Where, where did I go? I went to. Uh, I went to uh, Vesuvius in Italy, and I went to Rome one time weekend to Rome, and uh, I remember uh, we talking about the Hong Kong. I went went twice to Hong Kong. Oh, really? And uh, I was there. I had a uh, weekend, and I had three suits made at one time, mm. and I had to have fittings periodically. They were tailors. Yeah. And I had to have fitting. Right. But the suits were made of uh, British wool, real nice. Okay. Mm. Did you get to Greece? To Greece? Greece? Yeah. No. no. I, yeah. No, I Iraq Leon. I was there. That was the Air Force Base. I'm trying to remember the name of the one in, 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 in Athens. Heraklion was on Crete. Anyway, okay, so um, uh, any other countries that you can remember in, in Europe or, or China or Russia? Did uh, you go to Russia? No, I didn't get to Russia. Okay. But we traveled uh, another couple, I think, in uh, two cars. We traveled about 60 miles from... Uh, did you get to Amsterdam? Netherlands? I, I got to Netherlands. Uh, mm -hmm. Try to remember the country. Amsterdam, oh, country, well, there's cities. Rotterdam, Amsterdam, Utrecht. No. Mm -hmm. No. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I, I don't know. It's a little country up at the top. It's a little tiny. Let's see if I can see it. Mm. Poland? No. Denmark? Denmark. I, we got to Denmark, yeah. yeah. Okay. Czechoslovakia? No. Hungary, Romania, Bulgaria, Croatia? No, Germany. I got to Germany. Okay. France? I was stationed in Germany for a year. There it is. Prague? That's, that's in Slovakia. You know? That's in, yeah, yeah. Okay. I wanted to get there and never did. Right. Okay, so you you got to travel, which is a good good thing. Yeah, I did. Yeah. All right. So I just want to ask you a couple more questions. Um, did I ask you how was the food? Yeah, you did. And it was pretty good. And the and, and in the military was, uh, I would say. Uh, Better than fire, it was pretty good. Yeah. Uh, okay. <laughs> okay. Did you stay friends with anybody after the service? Uh, yeah, I had a good friend. Uh, we uh, we had to get the uh, Russians' permission to travel at, uh, up to uh, up Austria. I'm telling you about your name is town a while ago. You named the town. Um, uh, Salzburg? Salzburg. Uh -huh. It was south of Salzburg, about 20 miles. Uh -huh. It was about 80 miles that we had to travel through the Russian zone. They had to, we had to get rope, a great pass, they call them. Right. They were a car at about uh, five by seven or something. And it's a, it was gray in color. And we'd have to send in to the Russian get their approval mm -hmm. to travel up into, into that area and we go pheasant hunting up there. Did a lot of pheasant hunting. And he's, he's, uh, my friend was a staff sergeant at that time and he left to hunt and I left to hunt. Mm -hmm. And we had a rod club on the base and I, I was able to bring home about five guns. Wow. Mm -hmm. Browning automatic and all that stuff. The, the gun club was able to get them very cheaply. Right. And uh, they, they would uh, they would have a, a raffle on So I, I won some guns over there, 30 on 6 and all that stuff. Right. Okay. Um, oh, so you, you retired from the military, correct? So what did you, where were you when you separated? Kendall. 
Tyndall? Ten, okay, all right. I, I put 11 years on Tyndall. I was there four times. Really? Okay, and what was your job there? First sergeant. You were first sergeant at Tyndall Air Force Base? Yeah, when, when I retired. Okay. I was first sergeant about 16 years out of my 26 years. Right, okay. So what did you do after the service? Uh, I got out and uh, I had a friend who was a realtor in Panama City and uh, he encouraged me to join him and I had to take the test and I had to go to Orlando to take the test for an agent. Uh, agent I drove to, uh, to Orlando myself by myself mm -hmm. back and forth and uh, then when I was an agent uh, with Bill Everett for about, uh, I guess, four years maybe, uh, I wanted to, uh, I asked him, uh, I said, uh, hey, I believe that I want to go with Lois Tharp. She was known far and wide in Bay County. And she came from up around uh, Walsall and uh, so I joined up with her and uh, a friend uh, from California was working with her as, an, as a, an, a realtor. Mm -hmm. So we, he and I, left her and we opened our own office on Jenks Avenue. And I was in real estate for about 10 years, about 10 years after I got out of service. And I retired early from everything. Okay. How old were you when you retired? I'm trying to remember that. <laughs> How old were you when, when, when you went into service? What year was it? Uh, it was 1940. I was 19 years old. Okay, so 19 and 26 mm -hmm. is um, 45. What, 45? No, 30. Yeah, 19. And 19 plus 26 is 30, 45. 45. Well, you, you were 45 years old when you retired. Uh, that was about right. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. Yeah, so, I see what you mean. You did. Yeah. Yeah, I was. I was. I retired from the service. Yeah. So. But I said. I said. Then you I worked another 10 years. 10 years. Yeah. So you were 55. Yeah. 55. Congratulations. Yeah. I'm jealous. I got out first pretty, pretty early. <laughs> yeah. Good for you. Well, uh, I uh, had my retirement from the Air Force and uh, I uh, did pretty well with uh, some, some real estate that I own. Okay. Anything else that you'd like to share with us? I got a couple more questions for you. What are they? Um, the first one is, uh, oh, did you use your GI Bill for anything? The GI Bill, uh, yeah. I used a GI Bill. Uh, I had a friend that was also in real estate and he had retired about my time. Right. So we decided that we would uh, go to Gulf Coast College. And we went and uh, I don't know, it was uh, maybe a couple of months we, uh, we elected to uh, study uh, English. Uh -huh. And uh, the teacher was a black woman and she was very, very smart English teacher. So we were there. I, we didn't get our degree. What is the degree called? Your, your associates or your bachelors? We didn't get either of them, but we also didn't get the other one, the lower one. A certification? No. A license? No. Associate's a degree? Well, I'm trying to, I'm trying to say what, uh, we didn't get a, we didn't get a, a degree, so to speak. Okay. Yeah, we, we, but we did go to college there and it helped out a lot. I, uh, I was pretty good on English. I am not very good I'm talking to you people out of my age. That's okay. I, like my memory. I have trouble with memory of names and places. You're not the only one. I have that problem now. 
How old are you? I'm only 67. Oh, young bird. <laughs> But anyway, you're so, a youngster. Yeah, I know. No, no. What are you doing with all the stuff I'm talking with you now? You're gonna, you're gonna put it in. Uh, it's all going to the Library of, Car of Congress and to the archive. And to the archives, and then what happens if anything? Well, anybody can go there that you, you know, that has your name, and they can sit there and look it up. Oh, I see. And so it's a way to honor veterans, is what it is. Oh, yeah. I'm a veteran myself. Yeah. yeah. And I, what, what service were you in? I was in the United States Air Force. And you got out of it. You retired. I only did six years. No, I wish I had. I wish I had done 30 years. Well, it's a good thing that I stayed in the service. Yeah, I understand. Because uh, I uh, had some illnesses that uh, I used my tracker, my tracker. And uh, prior to that was something else. I forget what. Channels. But tracker came along and. Oh, it was Tricare has never turned me down for anything, uh -huh. and my wife either. Well, I use my, my VA benefits for my medical, and it's it's great. Yeah. Compared to what a lot of people are going through right now, it's I wouldn't trade it for anything in the world. I'm glad yeah. I did the time that I did. I'm glad I stayed because I had uh, some medical problems. Right. So, and my wife, my mm -hmm. son, Mike, who's 61, lives in... Uh, Atlanta, uh -huh. and uh, he went to college at the University of Florida. Right. He met his wife down there, and uh, she was uh, a student in the college. And uh, I won't go into detail much here, but uh, there was a, a little, little church off the base there in Gainesville. And she was a member, so Mike became a member, and Mike became a Christian at age 20. Mm -hmm. And uh, he uh, later was a minister uh, in Boston. He was at Boston, and he was at Charleston, Illinois. Right. That was South Chicago, about 100 miles. Uh -huh. Charleston, Illinois. He was, he was there for a period of time. But then he quit that after some years, and Mike now is a financial man. He runs a people. He uh, he uh, he uh, handles money for other people, so to speak. The financial and advisor. Financial advisor. There you go. So and he's also. Uh, he sells life insurance, which everybody needs life insurance. Okay. That's for sure. Luckily, I had two policies with MetLife, and they both uh, expired. You know, I paid them by month. Right. And uh, then they, at a certain point, I had them out, I guess, 30 years. Mm hmm and, and both of them. And they paid off pretty good. Oh, okay. And, uh, what else? Um, tell me about how um, how has the military affected your life? But the actual question is: Did your did your military experience influence your thinking about war or about the military in general? Number one. Uh, well, when I went in the service, you see, there's no war, but. It, in about to what in forty uh, six, forty six, forty six, forty six. When, when did the war start? Forty two. Forty one. Forty one. Yeah. yeah forty one. Forty one. Right. Uh, forty one. The war started, and uh, so I was already in the service at that time. You see. Okay. Okay. So I mean, okay. How um, how did your service and experiences affect your life? What was it? What was the what was the impact that the military has had on you? Oh, it, uh, I love the military. Okay, I really did. That's why I stayed for, for, for twenty six years. Most of the people got out at twenty. Probably he got out at twenty. 
I actually got I I got about thirty five thirty six years, but I got I've been in and out of the Air Force and in the Guard. So I got I do oh, got twenty yeah. years in the Guard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. About guard. twelve or thirteen. Yeah, in the well, guard. that's good. You yeah. got you got a good retirement there. Yeah, I do. Yeah, I'm yeah. thankful. I do. I hear you. All right. Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna thank you for a great interview. Well, I'll tell you another thing. Yes, sir. When I was uh, this is a financial deal here. Uh huh. In uh, 1940, uh, 1952, I think it was 1952, my wife's father had 40 acres of land mm -hmm. out here east of us. They call it Cook Bow and uh, Sandy Creek area out there. And part of it was only uh, water, but 40 acres more or less, but it was only 10 acres. Uh -huh. There was not in order. So I was able to, yeah, we paid him $400 for that. Wow, wow. And we, but we, so it was about a quarter of a mile on the, on the bay, facing the west. Yeah. And pretty sunsets and all. Mm -hmm. We lived out there for 26 years. Wow. I had a house built out there. Mm -hmm. Still, still on the house. Mm -hmm. And so I made about a half a million dollars. Wow. On Good for you. It was good, yeah. So that put me on easy street, huh? Okay. And so my son now is getting, <laughs> I'm here and I'm going to go out of here horizontally. <laughs> so the property that I own, we, I, I had a surveyor come out there and only 10 acres. I had him to uh, give me workout lots on the on the acreage. Right. And the, the waterfront, you had waterfront and you had a street in front or out of the road. Uh-huh. And uh, they were long lots. They were about, uh, mm, the lots were about, uh, I would say, about 200 feet from the roadway to the bay. Uh -huh. So in the bay it was something like a, like a, Something like this. The roadway was up here, and the, and the, the lots were here, down here. I had about four, about five lots. Wow. I still have a house out there, 330 feet on the water. Uh. Mm. So I did quite, quite, quite well with it. And, I, and one of the reasons for, for that probably was that I, had, I was in real estate. So I was a realtor, say, so I knew something about that. Right. And it was good, good to die. That's what I say, he liked it to do. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, I want to thank you for your service. Well, I want to thank you, and uh, it was interesting talking to you, and I hope I got something yet I uh, was ready. I was able to reveal some things to you that might be beneficial to anybody that might want to might well want to hear about Ed Johnson up at the library. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Ed. <laughs> now, what is your name? Carlton Cartwright. Cartwright, Mr. Yes, Cartwright? Yes, sir. And what is your name, sir? Ruben Sparks. Sparks? Yeah. Sparks? Yeah. yeah. Are you Sparks? <laughs> <laughs> okay, Ed. Okay. You're going to let me out of here? Yes, I am.